Hi, welcome to Lunchtime Live. Is anybody here yet? It's 12 o'clock. I'm here today in the small riparian area that we have at the estuary. And um, this is a good place for the species that we're talking about today. Hi, Anne. I'm gonna wait for a couple of more people. Um, just showing off the small riparian area. It's mostly willows. Um, we do also have some cottonwoods in here. I wanted to show the cottonwoods too, but they're sort of on the part of the trail where there's too many people. Hi, Juanita. Okay, well, I'm just gonna get started. Hi, Donna. Um, so today we're talking about the morning cloak. Okay, so this butterfly is in the family Nymphalidae. And these are the brush-footed butterflies. Hi, Carl. Um, which means that they have hairy front legs. So family Nymphalidae, brush-footed butterflies. Um, let's talk about their name, morning cloak. It's not the kind of morning that you wake up to. It's the kind of morning, hi Barb. It's the kind of morning that if somebody dies. So that doesn't sound like a great name for a butterfly, but apparently it is because the way that they look resembles a cloak worn during morning in Scandinavia. So that's a pretty cloak. Um, so that didn't fly with the British. That's my pun for the day. Um, in Britain, they are called the Camberwell Beauty, which is, a, I think, a nicer name for a butterfly. But here, we associate that name, mourning, with um, transitions, right? So um, butterflies go through a lot of transitions. You know, they have a complete metamorphosis. So that's a good association and also um winter turns to spring and these are the first butterflies that you'll typically see because they are here year round they winter over um, these are not a migratory butterfly hi Eunice. i saw somebody else but i can't i can't omar hi omar um Okay, so let's look at this butterfly again. It's native to North America, so all the way from Canada to South America, although it is rare in the Gulf states. So if you live there, you might not get to see these. Um, so it's a pretty big butterfly, about two, about two inches, two and a quarter. The wingspan can be up to four inches and um, it's a beautiful sort of velvety looking brownish maroon, kind of rusty kind of maroon. Um, and you see it has that dark border here with bl blue, iridescent blue spots. And then it has a yellow border. And this is a irregular border, although in this particular picture, this butterfly looks a little bit older. He's got a little missing spot here. And I think this is, even though this is normally irregular, this looks a little bit more beat up, a little more wear and tear than usual. So, um, what do butterflies eat? Butterflies eat sap. Hi, Leslie. Butterflies eat sap. So like I have in my yard some of those giant bird of paradise trees that have the big white bird of paradise flowers and a lot of sap. So I have a lot of these butterflies. Um, they also eat rotting fruit. So expect them if you have like figs or, or pomegranates or something because um, they do like rotting fruit. They will eat flower nectar, but they are not significant pollinators. Um, okay, so for mating, these guys are poly, polygynous, which means it's an 
individual male mates with as many females as he can. And what he does is he chooses and defends a territory that he hopes is going to be enticing to as many females as possible. Um, and one of their favorite territories is riparian areas, okay? So um, they roam and they migrate all over the place, but, in, and by migrate, I don't mean they're a migratory species. I just mean they move all over the place. And this is one of their favorite areas, um, riparian willow trees um, and uh, cottonwoods. So this is a good part of the estuary if you want to see one. Um, they have pretty large territories, maybe like 300 square yards or so. Um, and again, they go through a complete metamorphosis. So when the male mates with the female, the female lays her eggs and that is the beginning of it. And what they do is they will lay their eggs in a, like a ring around the branch and later in the season uh, it, these are early these are really early butterflies so later in the season they might use the bottom of leaves but let's remember some of the trees that are their host may not have leaves yet and that's why they start by ringing their eggs around the branches and the eggs start out like they're about the size of a pinhead and they start out a really pale green and as they mature they turn lilac and then they turn black okay um let's see so they live in this communal web for about 14 days and then go to their second stage the chrysalis Okay, so the chrysalis, if you, let me hold this better. Okay, the chrysalis, if you look at the morning cloak chrysalis, you're going to see the horns. It's got two horns, and this one has split, and it's just about to emerge. So I hope you guys can see those horns. Um, so that's their chrysalis. And this, this stage will take about 18 days. They usually start emerging, you know, in May, um, in some places a lot earlier here, more like March. Um, and again, some of the first butterflies to be seen. So the next stage is this one. You gotta listen closely. There it is. The caterpillar. This caterpillar is called the shiny elm caterpillar. It's about two inches long and it's spiny. And you can see it's black and it's got little white flecks and a black spots. So those spines have a poison sac connected to them. So the, the spines are sort of hollow quill like. And they don't try to sting you, but if you pick them up, it just sort of happens with contact. And it's kind of an itchy, burny, you know, stinging feeling. You might want to use um, like baking soda or um, an ice pack. Um, so you don't want to pick them up. So for such a pretty butterfly, Caterpillars, no bueno. Um, let's see. If I miss it, oh, I wanted to tell you a little bit more about the host plants. So it's not just what I've shown you here, the willows and the, um, and the cottonwood. In your yard, you may have some of the other plants. They like um, birch trees, they like elm trees, hence the name shiny, spiny elm caterpillar. Um, 
They like birch, they like poplar, they like mulberry trees. A lot of people have mulberry trees in IB. And they, they also like rose foliage. So we have some wild roses here they may be interested in, and they may be interested in your yard roses too. So those are the host plants for those caterpillars. And again, once they're a butterfly, they're interested in sap. Um, okay, let's talk about the predators. So they have predators at every stage of their lives. When they're eggs, there's ants and there's beetles. And once they're butterflies, there's prey mantises, there's dragonflies, um, there's amphibians, you know, frogs will eat them, birds, reptiles, even mammals. Um, my dog likes to eat them. He likes to run around the pool and chase butterflies. This is what he does with his day. It's a tough day. Um, interestingly enough, you might not know, but butterflies have defense mechanisms. And I'm gonna show you one of them. If you look at the wings when they're closed, so that's one of the things that they'll do is they show this bark patterned underside, which is camouflage, right? So they're trying to look like they're just a piece of bark. And another thing that they do is uh, play dead. So you might see them where they've completely folded their wings and kind of curled up their legs. Um, and that is another one. And finally, they will join other, other butterflies and fly menacingly toward attackers. That's what I read. But I have trouble imagining that butterflies could be very menacing, but you know, maybe. Um, so their lifespan is like 10 to 11 months, which is the longest lived butterfly. And, um, Hence the name, long live the morning cloak butterfly. And again, they do hibernate over winter. So you could see them around in a tree cavity or something in the winter. And just one more little thing. Um, these butterflies are the state insect of Montana. So if you're visiting from Montana, you know that. This is your state butterfly. So I'll let you see them one more time. Another nice thing about this butterfly is it's so unique, right? Nothing looks anything like a morning cloak butterfly. So all you have to do is remember that name. All right, that's all I've got on the morning cloak butterfly today. Um, I think next week I am not going to be here not next week, but the week after, because we do it every other week. Um, but I'll do it the week after that. And I'm gonna be talking about king snakes, because we have lots of king snakes here. And then I'll probably go back to a bird species, but next time it will be king snakes. So, all right, I'll see you guys soon.